We gather as community and create sacred space. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us as we worship together at Steinbach United Church. Let us gather once again as a community of faith, create sacred space and worship together. We acknowledge that the land which we gather, Treaty 1, is the traditional land, uh, land of the Anishinaabe, Swampy Cree and Ojibwe people, homeland and heart of the Métis Nation, who for thousands of years have walked gently on this land with deeply rooted gifts of spirituality, culture, and ways of knowing. Today we are called to seek a new relationship as First Peoples and newcomers to this land, one based in honour and deep respect, remembering that we are all treaty people. So, as we gather, it doesn't matter who you are, where you have come from, who you love, or where you are on your faith journey. Know that you are a beloved child of God. You are welcome here. You belong. And as we light the Christ candle, symbolizing the presence of the sacred in our midst, we do so in solidarity with all people and all creation. here to honor the loved ones who have lived before us. They have touched the lives of this community of faith in many ways and are remembered in the stained glass windows that surround us in the sanctuary. We will share a little of their story, read the scriptures that were important to them, and sing a few of the heritage songs that might have been sung in their day, the ones you named. Let us pray. O Holy One, we give thanks for the example of Jesus Christ, whose story shows us how to live. Be with us in his name of worship as we give thanks for the lives of the loved ones of yesterday and today.
The crest is the official signature of the United Church of Canada, placed on legal documents, ordination and commissioning certificates, and licenses to perform the sacraments. Designed by Dr. Reverend Dr. Victor T. Mooney, a treasurer of the United Church, it was officially adopted in 1944 by the 11th General Council. For our church members, this insignia is a spiritual and historic reminder. It's oval shaped, is derived from the outline of a fish, a symbol of identity by early Christians. The initials of words Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, spell the Greek word for fish. The crest is designed in the form of St. Andrew's cross with an insignia, insignia in each of the four corners. The X at the center, the first letter of the Greek word for Christ, is a traditional symbol for Christ. In the four corners of the crest are symbols, three of which, which are particularly associated with the three communions, Congregational, Methodist, and Presbyterian, that united to form the United Church of Canada in 1925. The Open Bible represents the congregational churches with their emphasis upon God's truth that makes people free. From this communion, we have a heritage of liberty in prophesying, love of spiritual freedom, awareness of the creative power of the Holy Spirit, and clear witness for civic justices. The dove is an emblem of the Holy Spirit, Mark 1.10, whose transforming power has been a distinctive mark of Methodism. Here our heritage is one of evangelical seal, zeal, concern for human redemption, warmth of Christian fellowship, the testimony of spiritual experience, and the ministry of the sacred song. The burning bush is the symbol of Presbyterianism. It refers to the book to the bush that burned and was not consumed, Exodus 3, 2, and symbolizes the indestructible instructability of the church. From Presbyterianism, we have received a heritage of high regard for the dignity, dignity in worship. The education of all people, the authority of scripture, and the church as the body of Christ. The symbols Alpha and Omega in the lower quarter are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. They symbolize the eternal living God in the fullness of creation. Revelation 1.8. The Latin words, I will try and say it, is ud omens, what it says around here. I'm sorry, I don't want to uh, ruin the, the Latin words. That surround the symbols on the crest that they all may be one are taken from John 17, 21. They are a reminder that we are both a united and uniting church. In 1980, a French translation of the United Church of Canada was authorized by General Council to be added to the crest. In August 2012, at the 41st General Council, the United Church of Canada acknowledged the presence and spirituality of Aboriginal Aboriginal peoples in the United Church by revising the church's crest. The crest changes include incorporating the colors often associated with the Aboriginal medicine wheel, the medicine wheel which reflects respect for diversity and interdependence, is often represented in the four traditional colors, yellow, red, black, and white, which incorporate important teachings from the four directions, the four stages of life, and the four seasons. The placement of these colors will vary according to the traditions of the nation. The medicine wheel teaches us to seek balance in the 
the balance in the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the world. The press changes also include the addition of the Mohawk, Mohawk, Mohawk phrase, which means all my relations. My name is Bertha Lang and I'm here to represent the Lang family and to bring you some information on the stained glass window honoring William and Mary Lang. Our great grandfather, Thomas Lang, was born in Scotland in 1839. In 1870, Thomas and his brother William and their wives landed in Ontario, Canada. From there, they ventured west just at the end of the Riel Rebellion and settled in Clear Spring, Manitoba. Our grandfather, William Lang, was born 10 years later in 1880 and grew up in the Clear Spring area. He remembered the first train tooting its whistle when it reached Jeru on the newly finished track in 1885. William Lang married Mary Spence in Grandview, Manitoba and settled on the farm in Clear Springs, Manitoba in 1910. Together they raised five children, Jenny, Belle, Edward, Margaret and Phyllis. Phyllis is the only surviving sibling today. The roots of this church reach back as far as 1877 when the Reverend James Robertson, founder of the first United Knox Church in Winnipeg conducted his first home service at the William Langs in Clear Spring. In 1873, the Clear Spring Church building was erected. However, during the next 25 years, a large percentage of the English and Scottish settlers began to leave. This left the church short of support and therefore it joined the Jeru congregation with alternating services. The church was always very important to William and Mary Lang. They enjoyed life with deeply rooted Christian faith, and in 1956, when the Steinbeck United Church was officially opened, they continued to worship there, supporting the church spiritually and financially. William's son Edward and wife Alice were also lifelong members of the Steinbeck United Church. Edward passed away in 2015 at the age of 94, and Alice passed away in 2019 at the age of 93. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Lang family to share this history with you today. This window was dedicated in gratitude for the lives of William and Mary Lang. The earth is full of thy riches, the Psalm 104, 24. I think this uh, verse was very meaningful to Great Bell and Grandpa because they were farmers and uh, we have now the fifth generation on the family farm in Clear Spring. This beautiful stained glass window was donated to the church by Bill and Agnes Cornelson. Bill and Agnes spent their whole lives right here in Steinbeck. They had a little house right next to the, to the cemetery on number 12 highway. Their house didn't have a sign on it, but it could have said welcome because everyone was always welcome to get Bill and Agnes' home. Their friends, their relatives, and they had lots of nieces and nephews. Everyone enjoyed stopping in to say hi, to have a cup of coffee, and my favorite time over there was playing bridge with Agnes. Agnes and I loved to play bridge with at least a dozen other ladies living here in Steinbeck. I'll tell you a little bit more about them. Um, Bill was Bill spent his whole life in Steinbeck also. He had arthritis, so he was, uh, it, was, it wasn't always fun, but I want to tell you about their garden in the back. They had the most beautiful garden. 
And when you went to when you went to see them, when you had a cup of coffee with them, they always would say, "You have to come in the back and see my garden and see and see the yard." And it was gorgeous. They spent a great deal of time there. Agnes said she was a wheelbarrow gardener. And if you don't know what a wheelbarrow gardener is, if you see a shrub over there and you think, gosh, Bill, wouldn't it look nice in the southeast corner when it blossomed? I think it would look nicer over there. So what do you do? You take your wheelbarrow, you go pick up the shrub, and you move it over there. And everything works out just fine. That's the kind of people they were. They were, they were warm and friendly. Uh, a little bit more about them. Um, Bill spent his life working at Reimer Agencies. Now, I'm sorry, I don't know anything more about that, except if that's, that was, that's what he did if he wasn't in his garden. And Agnes, this was in the paper, in the Caroline News uh, a couple of years ago, and it tells about Agnes. Uh, I loved her anyway, and this is just great. Agnes Taves Cornelson, entrepreneur, was born on the 26th of March, 1911, to Peter C. Taves and Carolyn Eck Taves in Steinbeck. She married William D. Cornelson, September 1914, son of longtime teacher Gerhard Reimer. Agnes broke new grounds when she went to train as a hairdresser in Winnipeg and then opened her own Steinbeck hairdressing salon in 1935. Known to be a generous, warm, and caring woman, Agnes's clientele quickly grew, ushering in the era of short, bobbed hair for the women of Steinbeck. As Agnes's business continued to grow, it eventually became necessary to hire Martha Barkman as an assistant, and it was Martha who bought the business when Agnes retired. Wonderful story. Um, another thing um, Agnes gave me was a recipe for cookies, if you're interested the sesame crisp, they're really good. Okay, Bill and Agnes uh, both lived until their 70s. One died in uh, 1986 and the other in 1988. They didn't have, they had no children. Jack and B. McAdam were co-owners of the McAdam and Sally Drugstore in Steinbach. The drugstore was, was beside Earl's, where Earl's Meats is now. I understand B was a great bridge player. She loved music, hence the musical notes. A dedication in their memory was had November 1991. Marjorie and Shelley Manson were present for this occasion. The scripture that was chosen for the window was, Let us love one another, for love is from God. John 4, 7. Most of us have wondered who Mary Jo Johnston was. She was a little girl. She was only six years old. She was born in uh, 63 and passed away in 1969. She was the daughter of Brian and Norma Johnston. Brian has, is deceased. He was transferred here from, uh, from Hydro. Norma was a nurse at the local hospital and they lived here for two years. Mary Jo passed away at six years old from a heart infection. Dr. Al Prop, a local doctor for many years in Steinbach, donated the window in memory of Mary Jo. 
to the glory of God and in loving memory of Mary Jo Lynn Johnston, ever remembered by family and friends. Welcome. The year was 1974, and we were excited to have welcome a young minister. In anticipation, the manse was scrubbed by all, the, not all the ladies, the men as well, in eager anticipation of the Johns family. They were coming with, oh, he was coming with his wife Eleanor, son Stephen, and twins Carol and Sheila. And everybody was anxious to have a young family in there. Some of the walls were taken out of the manse, new walls were made, and some of them were, there was a lot of painting being done. On September 24th, 1974, Reverend Rob Johns was inducted as minister of the Steinbach United Church and the Niverville United Church. It was the beginning of an exciting and busy time. In that year, we sponsored the Dang family, we had three student ministers in 1977 to 1978 uh, under the direction of Rob's guidance. The three student ministers were Swen Holm, Eric Matheson, and Stu Appenheimer. Rob's style of ministry was comfortable for any age. He loved Robert Munch. And he used to say the lines, I'll love you forever, forever you'll be. He was a man of many talents. He had also composed a couple of hymns, of which are in one of our songbooks. In 1979, we made a decision to allow us more room and a new entrance for the church. Thus, our services were moved to the Christian Education Building. All of our children were baptized there. My husband, Alf, was baptized there and confirmed at Easter time. And I think that's the only time that I remember that there was anybody baptized in the CE Building. On June 3rd, 1979, there was an official sod turning the reason we were in the CEE building was because they were, had taken out the front of the church to build the, the choir to give us more room in the church. So on June 13, 1979, my husband and Rob, my husband was the official chair of the buildings and ground, they turned the sod for the new building. We also, after that time, uh, planted a tree, and if you were standing at the, f going out the front doors of the church, there's an elmy crab been planted there, and that was planted in, uh, uh, oh my goodness, it was planted by our family in honor of Rob, and also uh, Dan and Gladys back Barkman came to help us, and Ed and Ellis Lang were there at the same time. On a personal note, Rob would often come to our place for a meal, and the favorite story around our house was that the time he came and I didn't have anything for dessert, it was just one of those spontaneous things that happened, and so anyway, everybody likes ice cream, right? So I got out a good four liter pail of ice cream, but our freezer was so hard I couldn't get it out with it. Rob says, you just give me a knife and I'll take care of it. So I gave him a, <laughs> it was actually a carving knife, and he carved the ice cream with the knife out of the thing. It's one mem fond memory that our family has because all the kids were of age that so they could, could enjoy it together. Another fond memory I have of, of Rob and Eleanor was when our house was moved to cross the road. Everybody had gone 
to school, and Heather and I were left, Heather, she wasn't in school yet, and sitting on the steps and trying to say nice things to Heather to keep her happy, and lo and behold, Rob and Elmer had parked their car at the mall, and they came and walked to see us because they knew that uh, what was happening that day. And it was really a wonderful feeling to have some substance there. As you know, Rob died in 1986. He's buried in the Clear Spring Cemetery, where many other former United Church parishioners are located. And if you haven't seen that seminary, I urge you to go and see it because there are so many United Church con contacts there. Some of the ones that are on these walls are in that cemetery. I still see Eleanor and the children and grandchildren occasionally, and uh, they always ask what's happening in this. He was a wonderful person. And the lines called by your name, precious in sight, held in love, will always have meaning. resources, to live responsibly and re responsibly, to share and to love. So let us remember to share the offering of our hands, lives, and hearts as the saints before us have done so generously. Gracious God, Accept these gifts we bring to help all in need, those here and those outside of the hometown. Amen. Our piggy is a little bit lonely, so if you have any celebrations or birthdays or just for fun, you can add extra into your donations to our church, and this goes to the Mission and Service Fund. of the United Church of Canada and I thought it was worth worth reading it and reading it and reading it a prayer as I put on my mask creator as I prepare to go into the world help me to see the sacrament in wearing of this cloth let it be an outward sign of an inward grace, a tangible and visible way of living, love for thy neighbors as I love myself. Christ, since my lips will be covered, uncover my heart, that people would see, see my smile in the crinkle, crinkles around my eyes. 
So, since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly and only with my words, not, but only with my words, but with my actions. Holy Spirit, as elastic touches my ears, remind me to listen carefully and full of care to all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your name, and in that love, I pray. Maybe it, may it be so. As those before us were called, we too are called by name. Go from this place of worship. Be inspired to live as you have been called to live, and love as you have been called to love. Peace be with you. Amen. <laughs>